Yeah, I've got some impressions from um, a wood turning symposium we had in Germany um, two weeks ago. So um, if you are interested, I could um, show them. Please do. Yeah, shall I go ahead? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. So I, I share that then. Um, okay, just to get it right. So you should see the the yep. PowerPoint now. We do. Yeah. So the um, symposium was held in in Hessen Park. Hessen is the area of Germany we live in, and um, there are symposiums in Germany every two years. Because of COVID, um, the the other one was three years ago. So that was the the first kind of getting together in Germany after. Um, COVID or well, it's not really after COVID, but um, when when COVID was um, less dangerous. And um, yeah, I don't know about um, other European countries where they have um, symposiums. There's one in Britain I know about There is a smaller one in um, in France. And the German symposium normally gets people from Germany, Switzerland, Austria, um, maybe the Netherlands, um, some people from France. Some people from Hungary were there, the Czech Republic, so Germany and countries around it. Um, the location, Hessen Park, is about 15 miles north of Frankfurt am Main, um, where the big airport is. And I show you some, some pictures of, of the park first. Um, the park actually is a collection of historic buildings from different parts of Hessen or Hessia as they, they call it in, in English. Um, and they are grouped according to four different regions of Hessen. Um, yeah, so like four different small villages. Um, and when the, the buildings arrive um, at this place, they are normally, um, they were taken down somewhere else. Um, they, the beams and stones and windows and stuff is stored. And when they have money, they um, set them up again. So there's a wagon makers workshop. Um, you also call that a wheel right? Wheel right, yes. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, and um, sometimes they demonstrate in there, but not very often. Um, wheel right. Have... The other word is Wainwright. Uh, Wainwright would make Wain... wagons, a wheel right would make wheels. Okay, so, so it's a uh, wing right then, or oh, both. Yeah, they they seem to to show both there, and they have a, a lace historic lace there as well. Um, the interesting thing is the the spindle can be moved for drilling. So um, um yeah, okay, and um, there is a wood turners workshop as well, which is of more interest to me because I belong to a group of wood turners that demonstrate in this workshop. So we do that for free as kind of voluntary work. People wander in there, we show them how wood turning works, explain about it. Um, and we also can, can sell a little bit of our, our stuff there. So that's the deal. We can sell something and then we do the demonstration for the public. Um, here you can see in the background the, the two lays we use. So normally we work with two people and then one is demonstrating, the other one is preparing things and um, seldom we both work at the same time. There's a treadle lace in the room next door where they also make wooden clocks, shoes, um, or where, where the machinery is there to make wooden clocks. Um, it's not, um, not working, but you can see the machinery. Um, yeah, we can sell our stuff. And um, now about the symposium. We had about um, 1,700 um, paying visitors, which is mostly turners, sometimes maybe spouses as well who went there. Um, normally, the um, fresh barn looks like this without farm machinery. They cleaned it out for the symposium and wood turning clubs could um, put up their stalls, demonstrate wood turning, again, talk to the, the audience who normally comes to this park, Hessen Park, um, and also sell some stuff there. So 
That's a photo I took for Jim because he likes kind of old um, wood with splits in it, uh, cracks in it. Uh, so I thought that might be interesting for you. And thanks, Kai. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> another one for um, for Gary. Um, he showed us work using this this kind of paint at some time. I thank, seem to remember. thank you, Gary Nelson. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And okay. Toby as well. Um, yeah, and they had um, in different buildings. They had um, dealers as well showing their um, equipment, lathe, and this was quite interesting. I thought um, for hollowing out, this guy had connected his um, his hollowing tool to um, a bar that was fixed to another bar that is fixed to the lathe and to the floor. So this takes kind of the the downward force away from the the tip of the tool, so it isn't um, pulled down. So if you center the tool, you can still move it left to right and turn it as well, uh, or yeah, turn it around as well. But um, the the tip isn't pulled down, or you ha don't have to to hold it in a way that it stays in the right plane. And he said at home, he normally has fixed it to the ceiling of his workshop, but because when he demonstrates, normally he can kind of fix things to the, the ceiling of the room. He has this um, bar here, he fixed it to. So that, I th thought that was quite, quite an interesting idea. Yeah, um, then there were demonstrations as with other symposiums as well. Um, the, the star guest was a turner from um, Japan called Aiko Tanaka. I don't know whether she's popular in, in Britain, uh, in, in the US or, or known in the US. Um, she demonstrated the um, traditional way of Japanese turning. And um, that is done on a, on a lace where she's sitting at the lace and the, the tool rest actually can be moved on this kind of table here. So it's, it's not kind of screwed to it or in a fixed position, you can move it around. Um, very different way from the kind of turning that I'm used to. And here's something for John. Um, she held all her stuff on a faceplate with nails. So <laughs> kind of a faceplate with nails sticking out of it. Her plank went onto it. Then she turned the outside of the, the bowl and the foot, and then she put another plank onto these nails, hollowed it out to make a cup chuck, and then she put the kind of bowl that had already been turned on the outside into the, the cup chuck. So here you can see the this is the, the bowl she was doing inside the, the cup chuck. And here you can see still the nails where the the bowl was held to do the um, the outside. <laughs> so um, and the kind of tools he, she used was a uh, wear hook tools mainly, like like this one. And after she used the hook tools, she used um, a scraper held kind of freehand. Very um, very interesting technique. Um, this is the, the work she does. Um, she does the turning and she does um, a Japanese style of um, surface treatment called Urushi. Um, I hope I pronounce it in the, the right way. And you get these kind of um, transluctant um, surfaces where the layers are built up or layer after layer is built up and it um, brings out the grain of the wood really nicely. So these are pieces she she made um, on this kind of for me simple lace um, or with these simple techniques. And here is another thing for um, John maybe the the video and audio setup um, in the the room where they did the demonstrations. They had hired professionals to do this, um, so they had four big um, video screens or TV screens and. That was the um, equipment um, they used for filming. They recorded everything. They had different cameras um, that they could um, control remotely. So they um, had a kind of a joystick to, to move the cameras around. Um, 
lots and lots of um, technology must be really expensive but it gave nice views for the um, for the audience and oh sorry and there was a competition as well um, these are two objects that got prizes um, here a hollow form with uh, a hole that is not in the center but x out, out of the center so um, that got um, a prize for the turning technique that was used there um, and also the public liked it at best so that was a second prize and our first prize from the public a second prize for the technique and then um, for another prize the first prize for a wood turning technique was this piece um, with a lot of inlay work being done and fine turning here and stuff like this. Um, to me, it looks a bit kind of traditional the way the prizes went for more kind of um, interesting objects. I thought um, they, they didn't win any prizes in Germany. So maybe um, we are more on the traditional side with our um, taste for wood turning. Okay, yeah, that's it. I um, stop that again. Are you muted, John? Uh, the, uh, I believe the finish on those Japanese pieces was what's called a Rushi lacquer. Yeah, Urushi. Yeah. yeah. Maybe I pronounced it the wrong way. Yeah. Yeah. And it's uh, made from the same plant that's poison ivy. And some people can use it fine, and other people will break all out in, uh, in, in yeah. like they. Yeah, it's horrendous mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah. Kai, were there a lot of demonstrations uh, live like we do in our American symposiums? Yeah, there were other demonstrations as well. Um, they had demonstrators at the stalls of the dealers um, who yeah. demonstrated there, and you could talk to them, showing different techniques and stuff like that. And then there were um, demonstrations just in this one barn that you saw. Um, there were demonstrations on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Um, so um, people taking turns demonstrating there for an hour or an hour and a half. So I think that's similar to the kind of symposiums you have in the States. Yeah. And what, was there any video presence or, or a Zoom presence, on uh, concurrent live online presence, or was it only being filmed to be shown afterward? Um, there was no Zoom. Um, and I don't know exactly about the filming. They did the filming, but whether they release um, these films in in some way, I don't know. So maybe they they don't. So and I I didn't film anything, so I cannot show um, yeah. what, what was going on. Maybe I should do then next time um, to um, to show how things work. Yeah. And what language are most of the? Uh, is everything in German? Um, mostly German and um, English. So um, they had some some turners from Britain as well, and they they normally talk English. And if necessary, someone translated. Um, as with this woman from Japan, Aiko, she had a translator who translated from um, Japanese into German because she didn't speak any, any English and German. But um, she had visited Germany before with the same translator and they know what they were doing. So it worked quite well. Are there any, is there an instant gallery as well? That, that where those prizes were awarded must have been from an instant gallery? Yeah, um, this time it was really small, just about 50 pieces they showed in the instant gallery. And it was the same room where the prizes um, I took the photos of the prizes and there were more prizes. I just took two because yeah. I didn't want to make that too long. Um, and um, it was a bit of a pity because it was one of the exhibition rooms of the museum with the old uh, machinery and stuff like that in there. They should have put up some some better background so to separate the, um, the pieces from the, the other um, exhibits in the room, which was, I didn't do. Was there any kind of a luncheon or a banquet or an auction or any of those other kinds of social events? Yeah, there was um, a barbecue on, on Friday night and kind of a, a buffet on Saturday night and um, nothing on Sunday, nothing special on Sunday. You could still buy food and talk to people. Well, that's what I did most of the time. I walked around there. I didn't see that many demonstrations. I, I mostly talked to people I hadn't seen for 
two years or two and a half years. And we do the Zoom thing in, in Germany as well. So I met a lot of people who I had only seen um, on Zoom previously. So it was more kind of socializing, talking to people and spending some money, I have to admit, um, um, at the dealers as well. But yeah. <laughs> Thank you very uh, much, Kai. That's a wonderful report. Yeah, you're welcome. Kai, you said no Zoom. Does that mean no virtual? no virtual presentation at all yes yes i talked to them um before the event whether they didn't wanted to do something like that and they said well it would be a bit of a problem the demonstrators they wanted to, didn't want their stuff being filmed and put on, onto the internet um, so they um they didn't like the idea of um, having um zoom um at the demonstrations, uh, same thing maybe as in, in the States as well. We talked about that earlier on with, um, with John. Yeah, Mid-Atlantic doesn't want to do any any of the demos. And I think that's fine. If you want to do demos, uh, show up or else uh, get watch the videos that they're probably going to post in a week or two. Uh, but if you want to participate in the symposium and say hi to people and look at the work and see the trade show, we can do that on Zoom and we're going to give it a try. Mm -hmm. Um, will you? I think you you will record that in in some way. What oh, what you are doing I, right there? Of course I will, and I'll have my wife take pictures, take videos on her phone as well. So we'll have a full presentation to stitch together at the end of it all. So we will see you talking to people um, filmed well, by your wife. We will see what I what we try. What we'll see how it works. I don't know. <laughs> it's a yeah, it's a big that, experiment. That might be interesting. That might be interesting to see that how it works, and then maybe I can show it to um, our clubs in, in Germany and say, "Look, that's what they do in the states. Why don't you do that?" <laughs> well, it isn't what they do in the states either. It's like you know what, what John does in the states. Okay, we're just <laughs> we're experimenting here, and I, it looks like we're out kind of out on the cutting edge, which much surprises me. In that, wood shop. Thank God for wood. <laughs>